Yesterday, we learnt how blocks stick to each other when beginning the Infinifactory simulation. Today, we are going to use this knowledge to make the logic gates and circuits we are used to inside Infinifactory. First, let's look at four examples to kickstart our memory. The first is a pusher adjacent to a block on the floor. When we run the simulation, the pusher cannot extend because the block is attached to the floor. This can be overcome by starting with the block in the air. However, now there is another problem. After the pusher extends, it cannot retract the block because the pusher and the block are not connected. One way to solve that issue is to connect the block to the pusher, but not the floor. When we start the simulation, the pusher and block fall down where they can be extended and retracted with ease. In circuits, we can use the slippery side of sensors to avoid contact with the ground, yet still be connected to the pusher itself. Ultimately, if two components are desired to be kept separate, then they are either to be joined with a slippery side, or they are required to fall into place. If we want two sides to be joined, then we need to connect them with sticky sides. Now we are going to recreate the fundamental circuits and logic gates that we are all used to. The first is the diode, or repeater. The simplest way to create this is using a piston, and abusing the slippery behaviour of the downward facing sensor to create an always powered, movable block. Note, this also works on the ground, which can be really beneficial. To create a knot gate, we can do one of two things. Either we can change out the pusher for a blocker, or we can simply change the position of the conduit. There is really no advantage or disadvantage of either. There are just two different ways to do the same thing. This is the OR gate, and like most OR gates, it is obscenely simple. It is simply two inputs connected to the same wire. This is the AND gate. This, like the OR gate, is pretty simple. Here, one input provides the power, and the other input inserts a conduit, connecting the power to the output. Thus, we can see the output is only on if both inputs are on. This is another way to make an AND gate, but with the inputs on the same side. By inverting one of the pushers and adding a conduit, you can make an X OR gate. And by uninverting the pusher, you can make an X NOR gate. Here is a toggleable clock. It simply uses a block moving back and forth on conveyor belts to make the conduit pulse on and off. To stop the clock, we simply power the piston, forcing the block to stop moving. In this case, the clock is halted in the powered state, but that can be simply changed by changing the position of the conduit. The clock itself is a 1-1 clock, turning on for one cycle and off for another. This is a rising edge detector. When we toggle the switch, the sensor will be pushed forwards, briefly powering the conduit before it is moved on by the conveyors. By inverting the pusher to a blocker, we can make a falling edge detector. Notice, before the simulation starts, we position the sensor on a conveyor adjacent to its final position. This is to ensure it is detached from the pusher. This is a T flip-flop. It essentially combines two rising edge detectors to switch a block between two different states. Finally, here is an SR latch. 